Our next speaker is a freelance journalist and blogger from Germany. Aside from his work in Southeast Asia and the Middle East, which is focused on human, right, human rights and censorship, he is very passionate about traveling. In fact, he traveled last night one hour to Lat Prau in the rain on his motorcycle, right? Um, but today, speaking about values of intercultural intelligence, please welcome Florian Vitulski. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm really thrilled to be here. Um, my name is Florian and I want to talk about values of intercultural intelligence. And um, intercultural intelligence is um, the experience and the knowledge you gain um, in an interaction with other cultures and uh, other environments. And um, I want to start with uh, this quote, because I really love this quote. Uh, when you want something you never had, you have to do something you have never done. And this is actually fitting for a lot of things in, in life, a lot of aspects. But it is especially fitting on traveling. And traveling is my biggest passion. Um, I'm 25 years old and I've traveled to over 50 countries so far. Like, there's nothing better I can imagine. And I want to share this idea of traveling and this experience I made uh, with traveling with you. Because uh, in the last few years, I recognized so many changes of my uh, self-development that I was thinking about, like, what is traveling actually doing to your, to your brain? And um, so I want to answer the question, how is tra traveling affecting our self-development? And um, I want to explain to you how our mind is changing. Um, and um, I want to focus on how it is changing our effective, our creative thinking and also our cultural values and now why it's so important for us to, to travel. And um, first of all, I have to make clear a definition of traveling. What is traveling? Because it can be very confusing. Like, I don't want to talk, if you look in a dictionary, I don't want to talk about, you know, like traveling from point A to point B, like this physical movement. Uh, I really want to talk about the mental changes and I also don't want to talk about a vacation or a relaxed holiday that you, you know, get the next cheapest tip, ticket to the unspoiled tropical beach and zipping a mojito. I'm really talking about um, individual traveling and experiencing a different culture and experiencing yourself. And um, my line through, my through lines are six balance points I created. Uh, it's about very contrasting attributes we all have, but we are all subjectively balancing them differently. And um, to show you the balance points, then you, it's, it's better for the understanding. It's curiosity versus fear, security versus insecurity, individuality versus conformity, inner world versus outer world, dependence versus independence, and focus versus abstraction. And I want to start with um, curiosity versus fear and security versus insecurity. Um, because curiosity is like the main attribute we have when we are traveling. It is all about this idea of being like open-minded, of trying something new. And it's also about um, answering this question, what is real, what is true? You know, you're getting a first-hand experience. And even so the definition is a bit different, traveling can also start directly in front of your door, right in front of your house. You can meet an interesting person, you can hear an interesting story, or you can just be in a surprisingly new situation where you're experiencing something that is changing your life. And I, have, um, I want to connect all this theory to, to the experience I made in different countries. And I have two stories from the Middle East. And the first is about Pakistan. And, oops. Uh, and I went to Pakistan last year to uh, Peshawar. And Peshawar is a country you may heard about in, in the news because it's like, if you hear something about Taliban attacks or bomb attacks or the recent floods or, or kidnappings, it's all Peshawar. It's, uh, it's this little city right, um, between, uh, right next to the border of Afghanistan. And I was amazed when I went there how friendly and how open-minded these people are. Uh, and I walked through the market there and, uh, and, um, and a guy in a, in a car w stopped nearby and pulled over and like, it's very dangerous here on the market. You should get in the car and celebrate the Eid festival with, with us, with my family. And it was a weird situation. Like, I know this Eid festival, it is uh, the sacrifice festival in Islamic countries. And they celebrate it once a year. It's like after the Ramadan, after they, they haven't eaten for a long time, they are like sacrificing an animal. And um, I was really interested in that. I was like very curious to, to attend the sacrifice festival. But it was a shady situation because this guy, especially in Pakistan, it's kind of their culture, they, you know, covered with blankets, long beards, and he had sunglasses. And I was like, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. But the first thing you, you, um, you learn during traveling is 
to build up a kind of um, international common sense. You build up human reading. You, you more or less learn how to communicate with nonverbal language. And I'm also studying uh, communication. And for me, it is really interesting that 65% uh, of our daily communication is nonverbal. Only 35% is really the content, the word we say. And the nonverbal language is really important. It is, um, it is all about facial expressions, your movement, your eyes. And uh, it is very important, the, the level of your voice, the, you know, what you really transmit, what you, what's your message. And um, it is also um, a s skill you gain and you, you can train. And it's good for all kind of stuff. It's, for, it's, it's important for your job, for your relationships. You can use nonverbal language everywhere in communication. And I think it's very, very important to, to learn these skills. And um, so I actually attended this EAT Festival because I trusted this guy and it was the right decision. So um, it was really, really interesting to, to stay um, that day with that family. And the Sacrifice Festival is like um, a lot about values. All the, the family is attending and you know, it, is, it is not really about the sacrifice itself. Um, when I took these pictures, I was, I was shivering. I was, it was so intense for me. I was like, oh my god, what, what I'm doing here? But um, it is... I always had the thought about, like, you know, sacrifice festival. What's, what's that? That's, like, stupid. You're, like, you know, cutting an animal's throat, and that's, like, what is it good for? But it was, it was so much social values in that, and um, I experienced that on that day, and it was... What was amazing how to you know to to understand these values and this recreation of traditions, and um, um, it is also uh, interesting to see like central themes of um, of cultures because uh, as a journalist I also um, do some research aside when I'm traveling I'm researching about small talk all over the world, and you know you have this basic small talk like. What's your name? Where are you from? And da da da. But what's I'm always looking for the first unique question that comes up and it's combined to the culture. So um, in in the Middle East and in Pakistan, it is a lot about family values. It is a lot about um, you know how is your wife? How are your children? Are you married? Stuff like that. While in Europe, I'm coming from Germany, from Germany, and there's it's more about work or other issues. And here in Thailand, it's a very food-centered society. So you're asking like, "Have you eaten yet?" Or it's like, you know, "What are you eating next?" Or something. And another interesting thing was in Japan, where a lot of people were asking me what I'm dreaming, like in two ways: like, "What is your dream? What is your goal? What is your plan for life?" And on the other hand, "What have you dreamt last night?" Like, you know, like very personal. And um, it's really interesting, but um, the main thing I learned about this travel in Pakistan that single things like the sacrifice festival can mean so many different things, and it's so much. There's so much connectivity, and um, I think that's a, that's a great way to learn because you have so many different perspectives all over the world, and it's. Uh, I think that's a, a great way to to gain this skill, and it's also very connected to the next point: individuality versus conformity, and inner world versus outer world. And um, it, is, it is a fact that we are strongly affected by our environment. And I recognized that when I look back to, to my travel experience and I was like traveling with my parents when I was a small kid and I was exploring everything, running in every little cave, whatever. And after, you know, suddenly everything changed. And I was like, I was wondering, because the most important things for me were like a, hot, a clean hotel room and uh, uh, TV with German TV channels and McDonald's nearby, and I was like, "What's what's what's wrong with that?" And it is, it is a normal process because it was around like six or seven when I was six or seven, and I was just getting into school and I got all this new environment and especially in an age in in school everything is changing. First of all, your body is changing and you have new challenges and you have new responsibilities. And at this time, we really. Um, we need advice. We're really relying on advices, on beliefs, on traditions, on religions, and it's really important for us to to get those beliefs and religions because we need structure in our life. We need security, and that's very important. And at the moment, I have the feeling that, for example, my generation in Germany, that you know, they're struggling with life, and I think they are struggling because we have a loss of structure at the moment because we're more and more declining religions, traditions, and it is difficult for us to find a secure structure. 
And I think traveling is giving us this structure. Travel traveling is giving us this, this meaning of life. And uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. Um, this is from, from Vietnam. Sorry for the cut, I was a bit blacked out. Um, I went to Vietnam in 2008. I did a motorbike tour along the Chinese border. And the northern parts of Vietnam are a lot of hill tribes. And um, it is um, very poor people and farmers. And it was a very cold and rainy night. And they don't have much hotels and guest houses around. So only in the big cities like Sapa or something, they have guest houses. And I was looking for a place to sleep, and there was this one uh, girl who invited me to her family. And it was um, a different situation for me, because I was completely out of my comfort zone. Um, it, is, it is very interesting, because um, when, I was in the, when I was at this place, it was just like one big room, and I um, slept on the floor before in Southeast Asia and Laos and stuff like this. But there were eight people in this room, and also plus animals. And it was also weird that all the washing facilities were in this room. They were on our walls or something. The toilet was outside, but I felt weird, you know, showering in front of eight people I just met a couple of hours before. So I was really questioning my own values. Like, you know, I'm coming from Germany and we, we shower private, and it's like, you know, you're questioning yourself a lot. You're like questioning, is this, is this the right thing I'm doing? Is it, you know, is there maybe more to it? And um, when I see friends uh, from Germany traveling, for example, to, to, to Italy or something, they are eating the same things they eat in Germany, and they are doing the same things. And I think it's really, really important that we all get out of our comfort zone, at least a little bit, to learn and experience in something new. Because if we are always staying in our comfort zone, we, we don't get anything new. We cannot you know, get new challenges. We cannot really experience something new. Uh, the next one is dependence versus independence and focus versus abstraction. And um, at a certain age in your life, you want to be independent from your parents. And for me, this was with 11, when I traveled to Greece with my parents. And I was telling them, guys, I want to explore this country on my own. And I just went to the next public bus and tried to travel on my own. It worked out so-so, but it was all about this flexibility and this uh, feeling of being free. And the interesting thing about traveling is that you have so many entry points, so many anchor points you can um, use to travel. You have so many, uh, you have, it's not only the place and the location and the time you can choose. You can choose your own cultural value, what's important for you. You can enter a country by food, music, dance, art. There are like so many things we heard about before, about volunteer working or, you know, there are so much ways to, to, to get into a country and explore it. And um, my longest travel was uh, in, in Laos, and it was six months. And um, I was traveling also in the northern regions, which are very poor, poor areas. And you're confronted with like environmental problems and education problems like every day. And it was really, really hard to see. And I think after a long, very long travel, if you're just like traveling somewhere for a few days or a week, you cannot really get this responsibility. But if you're traveling in a country for half a year or more than one month, you really um, get familiar with your environment. And the more you get familiar with your environment, the more you care about it. And it's a, there's a huge grow of responsibility. And to make a long story short, after I came back from, from Laos, I was um, doing a side project uh, called Green Gathering. It's an NGO, and uh, it's creating um, creating a youth center which is uh, for environmental workshops and uh, creative education in Nongkiao, in the northern part of Laos. And um, when you're confronted with completely different values, you also reflect yourself a lot. And you're thinking about your own values, your own view of life, and you know, how is it back in Germany? And you're also like accepting, you're getting more tol tolerance to your own country. Like when I moved here to Thailand, uh, nearly three years ago, I was really pissed of Germany. I was like, oh, I'm sick of the politics, sick of this, sick of the people. But during the travel, I was like valuing much more and more. And I was like, oh my God, it's, you know, I, I enjoyed such good 
education in Germany and add so many opportunities. And you know, I think that's very important that you also like recognize what you what you have in life. And um, at this point, when I founded this NGO, I was also it is also about minimizing consumption and maximizing contribution. We heard that in a lot of TED talks before that you know uh, Compassion and contribution is a very essential thing of being happy, and it's, uh, it's very important for you for your well-being. And I think you also gain a lot during traveling. You gain a lot of responsibility, and you try to to contribute something. So um, this is the second story from the Middle East. It was uh, in Iran, and I went to Iran um, because I was really interested in the in the history and the culture of the the Persian Empire, and it's really interesting. But another reason was also to to prove that Iran is not the same country as in the media. Because um, if I hear my friends talking, it's all about Aminejad, nuclear threats, and stuff like this. And I really wanted, I was really sick of this overgeneralization of things. And I really wanted to prove that it is not you know, a bad country, that there's not this bad image. And yeah, it was a bit embarrassing, <laughs> because after the second day, um, this was the last picture I took on the second day before I got blindfolded and um, got arrested by the secret police and was held in prison for a few days. Um, it was kind of my mistake because I was on a demonstration and I took some pictures and journalists were banned from the street and I didn't know that. So it is maybe an interesting story one day to tell my kids, but overall it hasn't influenced me at all on my Iran travel because Iran was such a wonderful country. I've met so many warm-hearted people and so many great philosophers and artists and it was amazing to to be in this country and to, to experiencing this country. And um, I talked a lot about um, the mental development and how we see things, how we perceive things. And there are a few things we cannot change very easily. It's like gender, class, generation, ethnic background. Job and work and neighborhood we can change, but also not so easily maybe. But um, with this balance point I talked about before, Um, we can kind of adjust our, our view and our perception on, on life and our, on, on values. And I think that is very important to, um, for our self-development. Um, it is all about questions. Um, because as a kid, we, we are exploring and we are asking so many questions. Alvin talked about this before. Um, we are like exploring everything, asking everything. And at some point in a certain age, we kind of unlearn part of this. We are like, you know, building up our comfort zone and our securities and we create patterns. We, we overgeneralize things uh, to make it easier to live. But it is so important to ask questions. And I think traveling is... Oh, yeah, we're also like, I have less time, I will skip this. We're also working, if we are only in our comfort zone, we are like um, not using our full potential of curiosity, of um, creativity, and then we're only using a limited amount of our emotions. And um, I think traveling can reactivate our minds. It can, to, to be more curious and to ask questions again. And... If you're traveling, you're, you're asking questions all the time. It starts with little questions like, do I tip the waiter or where's this bus going? But it ends up with really philosophical questions and life-changing questions like, how do I fit into this world and what is my purpose? What, what is my value? What is my important value? And um, overall, traveling is affecting our self-development on many levels. We, have, we gain a lot of self-esteem, acceptance, a lot of self-reflection. We gain perception and tolerance for other things, for other perspectives. And we also gain a lot of creativity and responsibility. And as you may have heard before, also a lot of inspiration, especially for artists and for, for people who want to change something in this world. They need to be at a different place. They need to see different perspectives. So um, I'm way over time, so I just want to leave with this. I really encourage you to start to ask more questions and to, to get out of your comfort zone and to enjoy yourself in a very new way. Thank you very much. Thank you, Florian.